Hello there, sword friends. This is a sword log vlog vlog type thing, which is basically where I ramble on about swords. Now, this is going to be a mixture of show and tell. I've got a couple different things than I normally get to share, as well as something I do normally get and some questions to ask and doodads and whatnots to show you. So, without further ado, first edition is this sword breaker dagger. Now, I don't know exactly who made this, but I'm going to speculate that Windless made this a here dagger right here. Uh, the reason I say that is because it looks like somebody tried to smudge out the word India uh, right around this area here, which probably isn't showing up super well, but basically it looks like somebody tried to tried to buff out the word India. Um, initially, when I saw this online where I bought it, I thought it was might be a Delton uh, sword breaker dagger, but I think it's windless, and because they're the only company that I know that's made in, in India, maybe Deepka... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. What do you think? Who do you think made this? In any regard, it's a pretty solidly constructed blade. Uh, it's not terribly sharp, but it does do this. This shit's still going. That's pretty cool. Um, the little tongs on here appear to be pretty, pretty stable and pretty evenly made. I didn't really expect a whole lot from this, but I actually think it's uh, cooler than I expected. It, fencing with it seems seems like it would probably be not terribly awkward but a little bit awkward anyway i don't exactly know how this stuff works i did fence quite a long time ago in my youth i fenced and in college a little bit i fenced but uh i i didn't do any kind of sword and dagger type work so to speak so how to work with this seems uh seems a little odd uh it would be fun to play with that's for sure but anyway what do you think of this here thing? This sword breaker dagger, I don't think they're really called sword breakers because they break them so much, but it does seem like it would be uh, possible to bind bind a blade pretty easily. Um, if, you're, if you're holding it thusly to, to catch and bind a blade, uh, it doesn't seem like it would be a lot, but then again, I haven't tried. And everything looks easy when you see it done by experts, and then, then it proves to be quite difficult and challenging. Anyway... What do you think now? Uh, as I look at other sword breaker daggers, often the point, you know, you think you use it, you're usually using it, I guess, with a with another sword in your main hand. So I guess if this is in my left hand, if I want to cut with it, I have this point to uh, to cut with. But if I flip it around, then I'm catching I'm catching swords or something to that effect. And in that regard, um, you know, the the point isn't sharpened at this end. It would still thrust kind of easily. I do like how these are made, and a lot of the sword breaker daggers I don't see like these lips kind of made, these arrowheads. Uh, if a sword came in here, there's a little divot so that it would it would be easier to kind of pinch and grab. Um, but then again, I, I mean, I, I, the shape here I like more than what I see in a lot of them as I look at examples after buying this one. But um, I don't really know much of anything about them, so take all that with a grain of salt. Anyway, the other thing that I'll note is just uh, about this. Now, this is made in India, but, uh, or at least, unless that's like buffed out and it's actually Indiana or something, I'm not entirely sure. But the shaping is actually uh, pretty nice. It's got kind of hexagonal kind of dimensions here on the cross guard. It's got a finger ring. Um, I believe it's peen. This doesn't come off. That's get, got me a few times on windless pieces where it looked like a peen and it was it just kind of twisted off. None of this comes off. Everything seems quite tight. If I really wrench on it, I can feel the wire grip just move around ever so slightly, or the wires move in my hand. But otherwise, form-wise, it's it's pretty comfortable in my hand. It doesn't feel that heavy, though it's a pretty small dagger in comparison to the swords you swing around. And the, the detailing work on it is, is pretty good. So I don't know what it is, though. So if you have an idea, please let me know. The next bit of awesome I can share is this here rapier. Now, this is the... This is a rapier from Arms and Armor, and I don't honestly recall the name. Uh, I got it online with the same dagger that you saw earlier, and when I saw it, um, I got to see this angle of it. All of these kind of spirally, awesome-looking things, which is what you find on the Arms and Armor website. But then when I got it, ba -ba, it has this shit, um, which isn't shit, but uh, nevertheless, the, the guard is made without the detail work on the opposite end. Uh, and I don't really know why that is. I did contact Arms and Armor, and they said this is likely this is an older version, basically without this side being made this way. 
Uh, I can't get any more information, or rather I haven't at this point, as to why it's made that way, or um, why that decision was made to, to do that, or if it was common when they were sold a while ago. In any case, you know, it's a pretty fancy-pancy rapier. If you were to buy it now, though, this kind of detailing work would be on both sides as opposed to just one side. I don't know if that's a historic thing. If you wear it on your belt this way to draw it with your right hand, uh, maybe you don't want to invest the extra work or money that it takes to have all the bedazzling done on the other side. So I don't know if it's a historic thing and this is a more accurate representation of the older model uh, or if it's was ordered that I don't know I don't know either way it's a rapier um, between <laughs> I thought the dagger might be a Delton and I thought this was a more current version so I'm, I'm not terribly happy with the the buy I got um, but you know them's the risks in buying online it is still a very nice rapier it is still very sturdy it still does have a lot more rapier awesomeness than I typically get because I don't usually get rapiers uh, the blade also has some spotting and rust which it's tough to see. I, I haven't tried cleaning it off yet. There's a lot of nooks and crannies in this rapier, and cleaning it is going to be a pain in the ass. But rapier-wise, I think the thing that I always think, even though I, I did mention before that I used to do a little bit of fencing, um, rapiers are not light. They're not, they're not a not heavy blade. So as I usually use katana type things, uh, a rapier, even though it, a lot of people think about it as light, it's not a a light blade in my hand. I definitely feel the weight of this instrument. Um, nevertheless, it is really cool feeling. I really like, it seems, you know, like I can use a pistol grip pretty effectively. Uh, if I want to kind of hammer grip it, it's effective. I can put one ring over, or one finger over the, the cross guard. Uh, it's a very comfortable rapier, even for my very large kind of sausage hands. The grip I'm super impressed with. It has this kind of really awesome spiral wire grip. Seems very sturdy, very comfortable in my hand. Nothing is poking me, uh, and if I were to wear a glove or something like that, it, it still fits my hand. This other wire piece up here, though, is a little bit loose. I don't know if you can actually see that right here, but this extra little ring here seems to move around somewhat. Uh, don't know exactly why that is, but the shape-wise, it's very nice. Um, I don't really get the the church bell sound here um, but it's still a very comfortable very nice rapier it's not terribly sharp I mean it is a sharpened model but at the same time you know it, it's not it's really not that sharp then again I guess it's made for poking so uh, the other thing I noticed is that here over the cross guard and one part seems to touch the cross guard and the other doesn't I don't know enough about rapiers to say if they're both supposed to touch and one isn't, or if they're not supposed to, or why that is, but it seems like one side touches and one doesn't, and I never asked the question, why does that happen the way it does? Anyway, um, this is a recent purchase for me. I think it's cool as hell. I haven't owned a fancy pantsy rapier before, and this is about as fancy pantsy as I've ever had, so uh, for me, it's pretty cool. If you want to see any testing or anything done with it, let me know. Um, I have it, so I suppose why the hell not? The next bit of fun that I have is this Wakazashi slash Tonto, but really more of a Tonto. So this is about 11 inches from tip to Moomanchi, and uh, it's a uh, Tonto made by Howard Clark um, in L6. So this is an L6, an L6 Tonto. Um, I am likely going to have this polished and fitted up and all of that type of stuff as I normally do. Um, it's going to be a project. Well, not that I do any of the work, so I say as I normally do. I usually send it off to other people to do work, and they do great stuff, and I get to enjoy it, uh, and I foot the bill. So that's likely what's going to happen here. Um, what I see here on this Tonto is it looks like it's going to have kind of no, no defined kind of yakote. Kasaki type thing. It doesn't does have a Kasaki, but I want to be a Kote or anything like that. I don't think I'm gonna make it like an O Kasaki Tanto. I, I think it'll just be polished all the way through in one. Uh, anyway, what I do know is Howard is just absolutely amazing uh, at his at his work. It is smooth and even. The Smith's polish is consistent. All of the little uh, grinding marks. This is in a Smith's polish, so it's rough. I don't know exactly what grit this would be. Uh, but you can see it's just it's just such even clean work and so you know it's it's even though it's not a finished product uh, it still needs to undergo polish it it's 
has a finer finish on it than some some products I would see. Um, and everything is smooth and clean and, and well done, and the transitions and lines are all really good, and it's got his uh, little signature here. Now, why it's at the bottom, I don't know exactly. A lot of the times I find a signature somewhere else, but this one is kind of towards, towards the bottom. Uh, don't really have an answer for that. This one came with a copper habaki from Howard. I traded um, a different sword for this, as well as another one I'm going to show you in a moment. And... You know, it seemed like a fun idea to, to get more projects to do. Now, I am debating what I'm going to do with it. At the moment, I have some fittings that I think would work. I have this kind of antique Edo period Suba. Um, it's a signed Suba, but, you know, it's nothing in particular. I have these swirly Mitsudome Minuki and this, uh, this Fuchi that will fit a, you know, this walk. is actually pretty big. Tonto, actually. It's 11 inches, but it's pretty stout. Uh, so it'll it'll fit with this as a pattern. It kind of, I think it might actually all fit on here right now. I don't really want to chance too much, but yeah. Here we go. Wow. This is how class I am. I don't know. It seems to go together reasonably well. I'm not entirely sure if this is the, the keeper. If I were to do this, I don't have a Kashra that matches. I've been looking for a Kashra that matches for well, for quite a while, but I haven't found one, and um, I don't think I'm gonna. So I think I might use these Manukis, have it done up in black silk, and then have a horn kashra kind of stuck on the bottom and, and tied on and, and do it that way. Um, I think that might be the fitting set, but I don't know. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it. If you have any ideas, uh, thoughts, or notions, let me know. But this seems like a, a pretty reasonable use for some parts that I already have, and plus it's already got, I can get swirly mitzodomes on it, and that's pretty badass for me. The next bit I can share is this katana right here. So again, uh, a Howard Clark katana um, with a habaki that was made by Howard Clark. Again, I see his May or his signature down at the bottom here, and I don't, I don't recall that being common on the other Howard Clark pieces I've seen. Don't know exactly why that is. Um, but anyway, this is a big honkin' 1086 katana. Uh, and again, part of a, a trade for a different sword. And it, the, the Smith polish and finish on it is a little, a little bit rougher. You can see just on some of the spine here, not everything is finished to exactly pristine, but still, you know, very, very, very good. Um, this is a big, a big honk and cutter, and it makes me really look forward to how it's going to come out. Now, just in my hand, this feels like a very stout sword. I have not weighed it or anything, but I'm going to venture, I guess, that when this is finished, it's going to probably be close to a three and a half pound or four pound sword. Um, it's big. It's a little over 29 inches. I think 29 and a half inches. But this wide profile is really kind of reminds me of, you know, competition cutting style blades. I don't know the historic context if there is one for this kind of stout blade. There, there probably is. But in any context, in any way, it makes me think of a big, hardy competition grass cutter. Uh, and I might, I might end up actually keeping one and using it for that. It's a little short for me, but still within the ballpark of sword sizes I can use, and uh, it, it fits, you know, Toyama Ryu if, in terms of general style, in terms of story, and in terms of my size. So uh, this one might actually, might actually end up being a keeper. The trick that I run into is what am I going to do with it? How am I going to finish it? Now what I can show you is a little bit of what I've thought of finishing it with. Let's go over to computer. That is a thing that I can do. Look at me switch the thing. Bam. Now, if you haven't been here, this is Hyper Cafe. Damn it, I didn't type in Mitsudome right. Here we go. Okay, what I'm going to probably get is something akin to this. Um, you have to be a little cautious when you order from Hyper Cafe because they have a tendency to supposedly be a little small. Now this is um, the concern. The Fuchi on the outside has to really fit everything and that that's a tricky, tricky thing. Also, if you're getting a set like this where it has all the Kojiri, Koiguchi, all of that kind of stuff, you have to be sure that it's actually going to fit the sword that you're trying to put it on. Uh, 
I've been bit a few times that way, having a sword where just it doesn't all fit together. I'm a little nervous because this is about 37 millimeters, and I'm, I'm going to order one that's around 40. Um, so I hope that's enough to um, to have everything done. The guy that I send it to doesn't like to work with such tight margins, uh, mostly because if you're using it to actually smack into stuff, it, it becomes a little fragile. Uh, so I might make him pull his hair out a little bit on this one, but I hope it works. Anyway... Uh, the other option that I'm thinking of is uh, basically having somebody make me some stuff. And I don't know because um, I'm a little, you know, I'm on a budget more than usual. I have undergone some projects around the house that have, have, have exceeded the expected cost. And my discretionary income is, is a little tight right now. So um, I traded a sword for these. I'm glad it worked out well. I'm super excited about the project. But I'm also trying to get it fitted on a dime. And as you can see, the pieces from Hyper Cafe, $150-ish for a finished group of Fuchi, Kashira, um, Kojiri, Koiguchi, and the, the piece in the middle. I always forget what that's called, but to have a finished set of Fuchi, Kashira, uh, is good. Now, I happen to have a Suba and Manuki that will match in a similar Mitsudome style theme. I'm not a super big fan of the gold. Um, I already have a sword like that. I wish I could do it in silver or like a full on kind of copper theme, um, but I don't know if that's in the cards. So, anyway, this is what I have. That's what I have to show and tell. Uh, and if you have any thoughts, insights, ideas for me in terms of what I could do, please let me know. Happy to hear it. Can't say I'm going to take your advice on it unless it has swirly mitsudomes all over it, but Lord knows I'm happy to hear it. Anyway, that's all I have for you, and as always, cheers and thanks for watching.